With his 2021 single, Montero, Call Me By Your Name, rapper, singer, and songwriter Lil Nas X has cemented his place as a queer icon and musical pioneer, while giving clout-chasing conservatives on Twitter something to act pious about. How is a song ruining society when it's by a black gay person? But your white cousin Clyde with a soft brain can set fire to the Capitol building and that's just a misunderstanding. You know what? I take back all the times I said the Pledge of Allegiance in elementary school. Pretend I sang Circus by Britney Spears instead. In a music video rich with symbolism from the Bible and Greek mythology, Lil Nas X elevated the concept of his song, which on its own already ignites the music industry with a much needed dose of same-sex horniness. In my opinion, opening the door for generations of queer musicians to come. Mark my words, Lil Nas X saved the world when he twerked on the devil, despite what the sad people who still post on Facebook might be saying. So saddle up while we break down the storyline, production design, and sinfully delicious meaning of Montero. The hottest place to party this summer since Chromatica in another musical installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, music videos, and more. And we give them the old karate chop into little tiny clips so that we can look at them under my gay microscope and say, yes, that's gay enough for me, or no, could be gayer. And also we talk about the production and the, you know, whatever, all of that filmmaking stuff too. But the main thing is how gay the world may be, especially on this day because Lil Nas X is my queer hero for life. Ever since I was a kid, I was excited for there to be an openly gay rapper who could really just talk about homosexuality in the same way that females do in the hip hop and of course men do and like straight men do in hip hop. And Lil Nas X finally broke the glass ceiling for us. So before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more music video clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I'm trying to get up to 200,000 subscribers in the Nick D crew, so it would mean so much to me to have you join along. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and watch parties and stuff like that. So be in the know. When we look at music videos on this channel, a lot of the time I'm upset over how plain everything is. You know, nothing is ever given too much subtext or too much time is put into the visuals. So it's a real palette cleanser to be looking at Montero, Call Me By Your Name today, which was not only an amazingly produced song with great songwriting and awesome performance, but this music video is it. And in my opinion, this is what music videos are supposed to do. Take a song, which, you know, people relate to for certain reasons, and then give it a visual element that sets it off even more and, and adds even more depth and meaning to everything. I think it's so cool. So let's just dive in with this first clip to start getting a feel for what is Montero and who am I calling by their name? Hello, operator, call me by your name. A ka -ching. We hide the parts of ourselves we don't want the world to see. We lock them away, we banish them, but here, we don't. Is this song about standing in front of the refrigerator at night? Because that's really where I let my dark side come out to play. Being secretly gay was hard, but I think my real problem started when I realized that pretty much any type of leftover is good when you wrap it in a slice of cheese. Sometimes I rag on content for having unnecessary narration or voiceover, but in this instance, it sets the tone for like a mythical storytelling feel, and it starts to get us ready for this new world. It's not too verbose. And it also gives us a little something that the lyrics of the song don't give us on their own, which is that Montero is all about being able to be fully yourself, which is obviously something that's very relevant to the LGBTQ plus culture. Welcome to Montero. I caught it bad just today. You hit me with a call to your place. Was hoping I could catch you throwing smiles in my face. Romantic talking, you don't even have to try. Live footage of me jumping off the toilet when I see a cockroach in the bathroom. And before anyone asks, yes, my bathroom is just a weird looking tree in a field. I'm a water conservationist. Also a moose knocked down my outhouse. Clear references here to the Garden of Eden, which makes sense because there's actually a line referencing this in the song. If Eve ain't in your garden, you see that the serpent comes down the tree and represents temptation, just like in the Bible. But I think it's also important to note here that Lil Nas X plays every character in the whole video. I think that can be read to mean that he's running from himself. This temptation is a part of himself that he's scared of at the beginning. The lyrics, however, I love because they're so exciting. I just think back to that time when you're like starting to get infatuated with somebody and you have this huge crush on them. And you don't know if they like you back. Nas pulls in this element that's also really common, which is like, not really being able to know for sure if they're gay 
way that went hand in hand with having a crush was that like adrenaline rush of will they like me back? Whatever the reason, will they be gay enough to like me back? Do they think I'm cute? Any of that. As a young person, I felt like addicted to that adrenaline rush. And I feel like this part of the song totally like embodies that for me. So for him to then pick up and start running from the snake at that time, I'm like, oh, we're in it. Great visual storytelling. I'm so excited by this video. Just a warning, don't go to the Home Depot garden center asking for the flower with the little black gay alien head inside. Not only will they not have it in stock, but they'll also make you leave before you can pay for your cute pink screwdriver. Guess I'll change those smoke detector batteries next year. I read on Reddit that those flowers coming out with the serpent's head inside represent narcissist flowers, which are also daffodils, which sprung up in Greek mythology where narcissist drowned in the river. The analysis I read was saying that's Lil Nas X winking at the narcissism of this song where it's like he's really feeling himself. I'm so excited by that, by the way, that queer people now have a hip hop song that's just as graphic about sex and romance and passion as those heteronormative hip hop songs have been in the past. And if we think about where other queer musicians have come from, people like Lance Bass, Troy Sivan, even Frank Ocean, a lot of them are openly gay now. Now, but they had to remain closeted for a certain portion of their career to get the music out there. Or rather, in some cases, the gay anthems had to be really coded. And even Troy Sivan with his single Bloom was sort of just a self-proclaimed anthem to being a bottom. It was, it was absolutely very metaphorical. I thought it was about flowers. So to hear Lil Nas X being very explicit with his lyrics is so gratifying. It's like the liberation that gay people needed. Generally, hip hop songs don't get so much hate just for having words about sex in them. But now all of a sudden, because of Lil Nas X, who kids loved in his previous single, he's not allowed to be openly gay anymore. Like it wasn't a kid song ever. So anyway, let's get back to Lil Nas as he runs through his garden at Eden in the first act of his video. Cocaine and drink it with your friend. Live in your dog, boy, I cannot pretend. Only you to sin. Even in your garden, you know that you can. Call me when you want, call me when you need. What's the sitch? I'm just kidding. I'm obsessed with this pre-chorus. Drinking with your friends. If Eve ain't in your garden, you know that you can. Call me when you want. Call me when you need. Call me in the morning. I'll be on my way. I love this song's like flamenco-y salsa inspiration while still feeling so on brand for Lil Nas X. Like, ugh, it's just so good. Meanwhile, in this part of the video, Temptation begins to seduce Lil Nas X in the Garden of Eve. In. I think it's only because I've watched this video in slow motion so many times that I do notice some of the seams around his makeup on the mouth appliance, but it's really beautifully done makeup. I do wonder if it was intentional for them to keep the skin looking so uniform throughout the whole face and head. I kind of wish that they had used some airbrushing on the back of the head to even kind of just disguise some of those seams. If you had brought some speckly airbrush around the sides or even to kind of contour on the face, you wouldn't notice those seams as much. In the wide shot of the serpent, it kind of looks like they did have some additional painting on the back of the digital character's head. So maybe that's something they just weren't able to fully execute in practical effect. And maybe I would have done something to the shoulders that are exposed on his costume, just so that it doesn't look like regular human skin compared to the color of the snake skin on the top. But anyway, as the snake begins to seduce Lil Nas X, we see some more visual stuntery. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I love a music video that has references that need to be deciphered later on. But just a heads up, this is Greek writing. My dumbass spent an hour trying to solve this like an algebra equation. Like, am I solving for the weird A shape or the weird Y shape? What number of trees does Lil Nas X want me to shove up my ass? The Greek writing on the tree is actually from Plato's Symposium, which is like a book where a bunch of Greek philosophers come together and tell stories. This excerpt reads, so in the beginning, when they were cut in two, they yearned for each other's half. Apparently this excerpt is from a story in Symposium where Aristophanes gives the account of the origin of soulmates, where originally people were born as halves and they became a whole person when they found the other person in their pair, like a soulmate. 
and these pairings could be male 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 female or female female and then the gods got jealous and they split everybody up so this could be Lil Nas X talking about the longing to chase somebody like your other half who is running from you or you're destined to long for them forever that could be like if somebody is infatuated with somebody who's in the closet or who is never going to be able to love them back this unrequited love was something I felt a lot in my early 20s for sure and I guess it's still relatable to all ages but for it's like something that I will always latch on to as like a theme in music so that music that always catches my attention because I'm like I remember that love sickness whether because I was falling in love with straight guys or I was just loving this guy who was way out of my league and was never gonna be interested in me it's a confusing time being alive and being queer you don't have a lot of examples of this in your media to normalize that so I'm so excited that this type of story is being told through hip-hop music anything that kids are listening to I think it's a good thing that kids are gonna be exposed to this because honestly they need queer role models rather than just seeing heteronormative garbage shoved down their throat and being told that what they like is a perverse version of it and that's on devil twerking sis before we delve any deeper into the world of Montero I want to thank today's sponsor this video was brought to you by privacy privacy lets you buy things online using virtual payment cards rather than your real personal information that protects your identity and your money on the internet right now new customers will automatically get five dollars to spend on their first purchase go to privacy.com slash Nick to sign up now what I love about privacy is how it lets me prevent subscription services from overcharging me in just a few clicks I can create a virtual payment card with a monthly spending limit for each one of my subscription services like Netflix and Hulu this is also great if you want to use one of those free trial memberships that require a credit card but you don't want to be charged after the membership period ends you can also use the browser extension to quickly breeze through online checkouts more safely and securely than ever before head to privacy.com slash Nick to sign up for your account again new customers will get five dollars to spend on their purchase so go to privacy.com slash Nick to get yours now let's get back to the vid uh. For the next part of the video, we move on to the Greco-Roman inspired era where it's like, and it seems to be inspired by Ulysses, where Lil Nas X is kind of being put on trial in this Colosseum by a bunch of other people who look like him, but they're wearing Marie Antoinette wigs and these denim outfits. And all the people in the audience seem like stone versions of Lil Nas X. So it really does kind of feel like it's about him facing judgment from himself or from society or from people like him. And he's mentioned in some interviews or live streams about the inspiration behind this song that he always felt really other when he was growing up in a black church and I think that's something that a lot of queer people can relate to is feeling like you grew up in a world that did not have room for you did not accept you and it was it felt really scary lyrically this is easily my favorite part of the song I wanna sell what you're buying wanna fill all your in Hawaii shoot your mouth while I'm riding He's in a prison made of denim, which is the title of a sad song I wrote after my first attempt at putting on jeans this year. After I've been in sweatpants mode, it is just not a breathable enough fabric. If I was one of those Montero Marie Antoinette security guards, I would be sweating so much. They would be like, you know what? You actually do kind of have to hide that part of yourself a little bit. I wanna sell what you're buying. I wanna feel on your ass in Hawaii. So good. Sentence, when do we have hip hop artists like talking about how they wanna feel up on a guy's ass in a song just like a male straight rapper would do. I can't think of any time anyone has ever done that in this viral of a way or this mainstream of a way. I understand that people don't realize how this is such a big deal, but the reason why it's never been done in the past is because people didn't think it would be marketable. Those other queer artists who I've mentioned, like Lance Bass didn't want to be in the closet. He was forced to be by the music industry. It was never an option to not be because gay music wouldn't sell in the record company's eyes. And now it's shown to be like, yeah, queer is here, get used to it. A gay artist can still be mainstream, can still be enjoyed by larger audiences, not just queer audiences. So by establishing this as a precedent, it means that other queer artists are gonna have an easier time getting record deals in the future. It's amazing. This next part is where we get the most overtly queer themes in the video. Really interesting to take note of. And now I'm making Nelly Italy. I want the ones I envy. I envy.
This actually brings up a very important issue in the gay community that doesn't get enough discussion. And that's the general risk of projectile metal butt plugs. We love the durability of stainless steel, but in the wrong untrained pair of greasy hands, the risk of a broken window or a cracked tailbone is very real. And I'm committed to spreading awareness through my self-published ebook, The Danger Stuck Inside Me, exploring the safety of sexual plugs. In this scene, you see Lil Nas X being stoned by the crowd with silver butt plugs, which, you know, it's a very clear reference to him being persecuted for his gayness. And like we said, it's like persecuted by the society or the people around him, he himself, maybe his family. So after being killed by society for his gayness, he starts ascending to heaven. And this is where we enter the final part of the video, which is so iconic. Wait, when did the Scorpion King from The Mummy Returns start working as a dancer? It's just great to see them living their truth. Now, I've never been a gamer, but that's just because nobody told me it was possible to have your Mortal Kombat character trick their way through every level of hell. That's fun for the whole family. Just as he's about to get there, a pole comes up through the depths and he grabs that and starts sliding his way down to hell instead. This hit part where he's rising up is sort of like the creation of Adam motif that he referenced on his Instagram. People point out how it's interesting that he's put in this prison and persecuted at the like horniest part of his song's lyrics. Like he's being persecuted for expressing his homosexuality in this way. This next part where Lil Nas X goes to hell is it should be its own series. Lil Nas X goes to hell. I would watch that every week. Yes, heaven is canceled. It was never that cool anyway. All those clouds were making my hair frizz. The music had no bass. The line to get in was too long. And you could really only wear sandals because Jesus thinks they look good on everybody, which they don't. I feel like this part of the song is for anyone who feels like gays should go to hell or queer people are gonna burn in hell. Nas said, all right, well, then let's go down there right now and be the king of hell, be the queen of hell. I don't care. Let's try. <laughs> That's me when I get an extra large cherry Slurpee. It's very sensual for me. I'm like, oh, it's just me and you, baby. Oh, you're gonna fill me with pee. I know he's giving a lap dance to the devil, but I think it's also relatable because that's just how all gay people look when they're trying to sit comfortably in a chair. I love the makeup for the devil. You can see where the piece does have a seam right by his shoulder, but they blended it out great. I don't know how they got the body paint on him to look so smooth. He looks so good. And the color of the prosthetic matches the face. I almost thought that there was like a bodysuit on, but I can't tell. I don't think there is. <laughs> I love how some conservatives think this could actually destroy society. As though Lil Nas X literally just declared himself the new devil and summer 2021's theme is devil worship. Like, okay, everybody, but instead of animal sacrifice, we're gonna do plant-based appetizers and everyone just wear red. New world order, I'll send out the Evite. Settle down, white ass Christians. Like, it's gonna be fine, I promise you. First of all, he was referencing other works throughout all of this. If him referencing Dante's Inferno is gonna ruin society, then wouldn't Dante's Inferno have ruined society? We're not talking about anything new. Madonna burning crosses. Come to think of it, every year there's some sort of thing happening in mainstream music that conservatives get all bent out of shape about. This one, you're just even more annoyed because a gay person you think is going to be exposed to your children. Guess what? That's your problem to deal with. Explain that gay people exist to your children. Don't act like it's some weird thing that you have to protect them from. Like, it's the truth. Shut up. What do you guys think of Lil Nas's Montero? I'm a stan. I can't wait for the rest of this album. This is the new song of the spring and summer for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the video below. Also, what other cool video should I clip break down next? Give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more music video clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here here. That way you never miss new stuff from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications. I would love to get to 200,000 subscribers in the Nick D crew this week. So it would mean so much to, or this year. So it would mean so much to me if you would click subscribe. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive clip breakdowns, virtual watch parties, and more. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for diving into Montero with me today. Call me when you want. Call me when you need it. Call me by your name. Tell me you love me in private. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.